Hey everybody, welcome back to the Siren Podcast. I have a very awesome show for you tonight. My guest today is Dearest Azazel. They are a rock band. They're no longer together anymore, but they are one of my all-time favorite bands. They mix metal with uh, dance and synth parts. It's really great. They've got a bunch of great albums. Make sure and check them out on all the major platforms. Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, all that stuff is there. So we talk kind of about where they got their name, some touring stories, and kind of what they're doing now. I uh, had a really great time talking to them. They're a great bunch of guys. So let's just get right into it. The great, the awesome, one of the best, Dearest Azazel. guys thanks for coming on the show appreciate it what's up how you doing man hey man i'm doing good um you know with all the crazy stuff going on you know sitting in the house and stuff so it's good it's good to see people yeah i miss people <laughs> yeah i was uh i had a a podcast the other day and um i just did kind of like a live Thing where I was just kind of hanging out and I had people uh, come on and they called in like like video call just randomly and people were just talking and it was kind of like hanging out with people again it was kind of cool I think I might start doing that just it's the closest thing you can do is uh, hang out just have a little group chat um, that's pretty fun so uh, if, if I were to you know just disclose this about myself I joined a, a D and D uh, party like two weeks ago and so I've got to zoom a couple of times with like 
the guys that I'm in a band with, and and so it is just like hanging out. And at the same time, we get to like go full nerd. It's, it's something else. I've never uh, I've never played D and D. I've heard a lot about it. That's more of like a uh, you kind of. It's not like a game, it, game, but you kind of make it up as you go. Like somebody's like, "Here's what's happening," and you kind of act it out. I guess. Yeah, I mean it's 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 improvised. It's I mean it's it's interesting. I never thought I'd play it in a million years. I'd have bet my life on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what everybody I've says, you know. Yeah, it's but gotta, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, like okay. Three o'clock in the morning doing it. Well, that's what I, I hear. Never thought that just the dragons happened to me. Says. <laughs> you should. Uh, <laughs> you should get a T-shirt that says that. I never thought D and D would happen to me, and it rhymes. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's fantastic. I guarantee you, saw <laughs> all of them. Yeah, uh, you're welcome. All three of them. Just, just put my name like <laughs> at the bottom of the shirt. You got it, man. Just a little time. Uh, I can, I can handle that. <laughs> um, so I asked you guys on because, and I don't say this just like as a, like local bands or bands in the area, y'all, you guys are one of my favorite bands of all time, like all bands, all of them. So, you know, Blink-182, all of them. And, uh, that's why I wanted to have you guys on. It's, you guys are awesome. I've been listening to your music since, I don't know. I, I played a show with y'all in a band called Waiting for Brantley in Mobile at the Cell, really? cell Block or something like that. Uh, that was the first totally time. Totally remember Waiting for Brantley. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I've never forgotten that, that, that name. <laughs> yeah. So we drive through Brantley, Alabama. <laughs> yeah. Um, so th I played with them. That's how I, I found y'all. And then I had the, the first CD and I had all the CDs. And I still listen to it. Um, I actually got Peter to send me all the old stuff that's not online, so I've been listening to that. Um, really great. I really love the music. So, thank. You. Yeah, it's awesome. Thanks, I, appreciate you. I, I, I can honestly say that I was completely shocked that anybody would want to interview. Me. <laughs> <laughs> when Peter told me, I was like, "What?" <laughs> no, I mean, you can ask my friends. They're like, uh, we would get in the car, especially like in in high school, and they'd be like. Can't, let's listen to something else. And I'm like, nah, we're listening to see. <laughs> <laughs> There's a part, uh, I don't want to give, give up too much about what we'd be doing, but we'd be driving around, hanging out, you know, driving around. And there's a part in graveyard scene where there's a solo <laughs> and it, it's right. It's like, it builds up and it goes, dee, dee, dee. I can't make the sound, Oh yeah. but that part was sick. I remember just being like, repeat that. It was awesome. So, that's oh, nice. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I don't want to just sit here and like keep going. But no, I could. no, that I, could. Was, <laughs> I, re I remember when 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 that was being like kind of brought to life. I remember standing in the studio and like that little counterpoint solo. It's got two little licks going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. It was very cool. Yeah, I love that part. <laughs> Shit, I haven't thought about that forever. Yeah, go back and go back and listen to it. It's you'll remember. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm g curious about the name, and I've always pronounced it Azazel. Is that how you pronounce it, dearest Azazel? And so yes. that is from what I've seen. I've heard it's a a demon. I've heard it's something to do with like Jewish folklore, some sort of spirit. Or am I just way off the the block here? You're pretty close. <laughs> You're pretty close. I don't know. Yeah, you, were, you were right at the demon part. Okay. Yeah. Man, I, Peter can explain that better. It I mean, was, anybody can. But. It, it was kind of, to me, uh, it was kind of a complex psychological thing. Like, people are motivated by selfishness, typically. And so when you so when you reach down to the core of a person's intentions, oftentimes that's, that's what you find, you know. Selfish motivation. So that that's what it was. Uh, it was not the kind of band name that rolled off the tongue. You know, later on, in, we I think we were trying to go with just DA. Yeah, the record label put us as We Are DA. Remember that? <laughs> I do. Yeah. yeah. 
It was like, you guys, you guys just go by We Are DA or DA. Even the drum logo was just <laughs> DA. Hmm. That's, I don't like that as much. I, I think the name's fine. It was, it's good. It was German for yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, so dearest, it's just a. Uh, it's a it's a demon that is selfish, or maybe I missed. Maybe I'm well, I'm, 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 able, I'm biblical. I'm biblical terms. Azazel is the is the rebellious it's a rebellious demon that does mm -hmm. uh, things that only make him happy. Oh, okay. So that's that's where the selfishness comes in. If you talk in biblical terms, mm -hmm. the dearest was just to make it more more uh, appealing, more more like the effeminate part. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes any sense. You know? Yeah, yeah, makes so, sense. That's cool. That was well said. Yeah. I thought I thought he was just the satanic god of makeup for a long time. So, <laughs> well, yeah, we um, I think we all developed our own sort of feeling about it. Uh, you know, so, it's an interesting, interesting background to the the band name. I think it all came to mean different things at different times to us, and. Yeah. Cool. I like it. I, I think it's a cool name. Um, I remember there, it reminded me of there's a there's an X Men named Azazel. I don't know what he does. Yeah. Uh, I think he can. He like flashes and then shows up wherever he wants. It's cool as shit. He like disappears and then reappears like anywhere. He uh, definitely he definitely one of the cooler X Men. You know what? I just thought about this. Um, you have a guitar amp and a B-52. I saw a video with you playing a B-52. Don't you have one of those? I do have a B-52. It's like... You I still have it? <laughs> yeah, I still got it. It's, I, at, <laughs> it's at somebody else's house right now, but I've still got it. Got a full stack. I was at a... Uh, I've, n I've never heard of those before. I was at a pawn shop and somebody... Ha they had one of those for like $100 and I got it. And it's a pretty kick-ass amp. It's like a... Uh, Mesa, <laughs> essentially Mesa Boogie. Yeah, that's I mean that's what it's modeled after. There's there's three switches or a switch. It's got three settings on the back, and one of them is supposed to you know model after the Mesa as close as you can get without getting sued. Yeah, <laughs> but no, the, the band that I was in previous to to Dear Zazel, the, the other guitar player, phenomenal guitar player, played through like you know his whole rig was wrapped rack mounted you know his power is eq everything and he had just the sweet sweet tone and then he switched over to that amp and i i mean it was just a sweeter tone you know it cut through and still blended well at the same time so i wanted one and uh when i was up there with these guys that's that's what i picked out yeah yeah at first at first i think it was like a one of the first round Randalls and like the counterpoint between that poor old Randall and my five one fifty was just it was so disappointing at first. So whenever I, was, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't even remember what it was. It was so disappointing. <laughs> yeah, no, there there was no keeping up with the fifty one fifty. definitely not with that Randall. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I didn't get it because like you can't do good by yourself, but then like well, and you played well and you always played well, but then when we played together, it was like the two amp sounds were just terrible, and it was like, oh, I'll be right back. Yeah, no, it, just, it didn't work. But um, as we as we moved on, we had to kind of jump in a bit there. But when Peter moved over to the keys, and I got to play with both amps at the same time, that was that was something else. I played through two full tracks with a. Um, uh, what did you call it? A B X Y A B X. Yeah, A B Y switch. A B Y. Thank you. And then two yeah, pedals. So, it was a. Uh, it was truly something to behold. You hit that button, that fifty, that fifty one fifty kick, and then it was all making one sound. It was phenomenal. That's yeah. pretty sick, though. I didn't. I didn't realize you did that when you were playing. 
I only saw yeah, the guy that actually. Um, I only saw y'all once where Peter was playing. Uh, the synth. He had a little. He had a little synthesizer. Um, uh, all the other times I saw you, you were on guitar. Uh, the first time I saw you, there was a, a guy that had like a uh, y'all had another guy. <laughs> <laughs> we had two other guys. Oh, this was the yeah. guy that had, he had, I remember him because he had plastic uh, pants on. Or like leather. Yeah, that was definitely Mike. Like, <laughs> that had to have been Mike. Like, he had like a, yeah, oh, I, don't, a double I, don't, I don't remember, I don't remember Chris, Chris ever wearing plastic pants. Unless it, unless it was uh, Patrick. But I don't, I don't see him as a plastic pants wearing kind of guy. Yeah. Not if Peter was on guitar. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Peter, you had that. You still have it because I saw it. Uh, that uh, bitch guitar. I do. That guitar is sweet. Somebody had one for sale uh, around here. I thought about getting one, but uh, I don't know. I got too many guitars. But that guitar is sick. I like that guitar. I've always liked that guitar. But it played you with as good action as that guitar. Yeah. It plays really nice. So it's. Um... Right now it's tuned to, to B standard. I've got 13 gauge strings on it now, so oh, wow. finally went heavy. <laughs> um, but yeah, not all not all bitches are created equal. Uh, so yeah. you know, buy everywhere whenever you whenever you go whenever you um go after them. Uh, all the electronics have you know failed very quickly. Pickups were bad. It was like a beautiful girl with terrible yeah. mental problems, but she just. Just persevere. I thought you were talking about girls the whole time. <laughs> yeah, well, you did say bitch. So, you know, you could refer to that as you're into that. Yeah. It's like, ult there's like ultimate double entendre possibilities with that. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice bitch. Check out that bitch. Got it, uh, thick strings on that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bitchin' bitch. <laughs> yeah, what? Now he's playing. Now, now it's a very white bitch. Very he's white. down to. <laughs> yeah, because he's, he's he's doing the fucking very white tuning. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I've been wanting to do that, but I hear when you do that, you got to reset your neck and all kinds of stuff. And one thing I've I've tried to learn how to do, but never could do, is set up a guitar, uh, adjust the stuff. I think I can, and I try, and then I ended up just messing it up so i just stay do you, do you have any floyd rose by any chance i did have one <laughs> did you change the strings one time i did i had one one time i had a floyd rose <laughs> it was a jack yeah, because it like takes about changing the strings once before you're you're over it for <laughs> life but I've, I've got three and if you can get past that that hurdle they're, they're really fun to play and you can set those up really easy well there's a, a new bridge out called Evertune. Have y'all seen that? It's like um, yeah. it's like a, a, a physical, it's not digital, it's like a, a mechanical piece, it's just springs, I don't know really how it works but it replaces your bridge and the guitar stays in tune for, like, it doesn't go out of tune, like, at all. <laughs> it literally does not go out of tune and you can still bend with it uh, and you can make it to where like even if you bend it doesn't change the pitch so like if you're doing rhythm and you bend it all the way down it doesn't bend make the bend sound it's crazy check it out Evertune <laughs> check it out check it out it's this like I made it or something Ever I didn't it. <laughs> the Ambulance Studio Podcast is sponsored by Evertune uh, I'd be nice <laughs> If if you're watching Evertune, send me something. I'll I'll talk about it. <laughs> I'll play it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get it installed. We'll we'll demo. <laughs> Whatever you need, man. Send it on out. Um. So yeah, how did uh how did y'all start? How did how did y'all get together? What's the story of Beer Society? You. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> She took the glasses out. Oh my god! She <laughs> took the glasses out. I mean, it's spicy chicken. All right. So Peter and I were going to the same university, and um, I don't know how much longer I had been there before he showed up. But when he showed up, uh, he was a very 
unique looking character. You know, he had uh, you know, crazy long uh, blonde hair. Uh, you just you know, tight clothes. One hundred percent, you just you've never seen a person dressed or really looked like this guy. And um, one day we were celebrating um, Dr. Lauderdale's like centennial or something. Uh, the piano instructor, and he comes in and he's standing next to me. And I look down in his shoes. One of the pair, one of the shoes. I'm gonna say it was his right. It was his right shoe. I remember it like it was yesterday. The sole was completely detached from the shoe, and he had it. He had just duct tape wrapped around the, the shoe. And I'm like, what, what the fuck is going on with this guy? And so I, I go home and I tell my girlfriend, now wife, um, about this character. And like two, three weeks later, my girlfriend, I, I take her to her prom, her senior prom in in Fort Walton, which is, you know, an hour away from where we went to university. And this character shows up and he's there with who ends up being the prom queen. And I'm like, oh, what? Yeah. what is going on? Are you right? So, yep. Yeah. So um, the next time I saw him, we were, I was out on, on the staircase having a cigarette, and he came walking by. I was like, uh, hey, Scarecrow Man, let me talk to you for a minute. And I asked him, uh, I asked him if that was him. I, mean, I knew the answer, obviously. Like I said, this is one of a kind. I was what were you doing over there? We got we got to chat and he told me about a band that he was in and I asked him if he ever wanted to play. You know, I I like jamming. I knew he, he was a guitar major, so he had to be good. And uh, he counter offered <laughs> with uh, oh, an open okay. position in the band that he was in. Yeah. And and I took the offer. So that's how Peter and I met. And uh, Rick, you can take it from here. Honestly, yeah. I. I vaguely remember. I know I was like an audition it was, uh, at a warehouse somewhere in in Georgia, right? Vision Studio, and, uh, oh, Atlanta. Yeah. Yes, in Atlanta. And um, I was sitting. I got there for the audition, in which I don't even remember how I saw the audition. I don't remember if it was a, a Craigslist or something like that. I don't remember how how I even came to it. Um, I know I was like. Drummer number fifty or some shit like that. You guys have addition. For sure. Tons of drummers. And I was outside. And I was outside and I was just talking to Jesse, which I didn't know he was part of the band. You know, we was just hanging out talking shit and I think too. And we came out all talking and you know they were like, Oh well, so I'm here for and we are the only for the day. The, the which I think the drums that were in there like pretty much occupied the whole the whole room, <laughs> and that was it. As far as I remember, I don't remember much except being asked to play double bass. Uh, then I got asked to play to jam it to a song, see how well I can follow, and I think that was it. Pretty much. Do y'all have any sure, double bass? Sure. You know, not at the time. Um, we we were all kind of like a bunch of like metal yeah. and sort of classic rock guys that that wanted to play sort of dancey music. Mm -hmm. I would say I would say that's kind of sums us up. Well, see that um, that's what I liked about it was it was it was like metal, uh, but with the dance beats, uh, the boots, uh, and then the the heavy synths. It was just completely nobody else was doing that nobody else as far as i've seen is is or has done that it was sick i liked it that's why i was drawn to it. um thank you yeah that was sick yeah we uh, yeah, yeah we wanted to have uh we wanted it to be as sort of groovy as a a pre-recorded track you know and but with every but with everything played live on actual instruments is what is I would say what we were going for at the time. 
Um, we started we started off. We had an actual keyboard player, um, and finding an actual keyboard player back when we were doing that was really hard to find because they just didn't exist. And um, so we did that. We did that for the first album and into the little second one, and then uh, he quit on our our tour, and so then. I, I recall telling, telling the guys like in a gas station. I was like, "Look, you know, we're gonna take a month off. I'll, I'll play synth and sing. Jesse, you play out. You can use my amp with an ABY switch. We'll, we'll sort of tier dynamic it. You know, like the uh, you know, the B fifty two for most of the parts, and then bring in the five one fifty for the push over the clip on on the choruses, so the live sound would be would be bigger. And then." So that took a, took a bit to get used to. I was like, I, I can't dance at all. And I was like, now I, I was just sitting there. Like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, it's and, uh, different to, to go from holding the guitar. When you're on stage, holding the guitar is a huge security blanket. Whenever you take it off and have to just sing by yourself, you realize how much just holding it, even if you don't play it, if you're just like holding it, how much it, how different it is to be standing there. Cause uh, I sang in a band one time and uh, didn't have a guitar. And it was, you have to like, you gotta, you, you can't just like stand there, um, but you gotta move around or do something. So. You gotta shake your money maker. Yeah. I, mean, I can't do that. <laughs> I, I think I think it was a smart transition, though. I mean, uh, Peter pretty much wrote all the keyboard parts, anyways. Yeah. So you know, Peter always taught the keyboard player, "This is what I want you to play." So it was actually a easier, an easy transition as a band for that to happen. I mean, I know like cosmetically it was different, mm -hmm. um, but but essentially for our sound and our dynamic as a band, it was it was better. We were. We were purists at that time. Like so, for us, everything had to be played live. Like mm -hmm. we, everything we wanted to do everything that we did on our record live. But we were purists. Now, like far from it. But <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hey, backing tracks, please, please, let me have some backing tracks. <laughs> yeah. but, but back then, it was like we were purist you know and this is actually you know it's just to you know like this is the first time i see jesse and peter in almost 10 years wow that we've seen each other yeah it's been a long time like last time i saw jesse jesse was helping me move back because i was moving back home and jesse was helping me hmm. yeah. and jesse helped me uh, with the move well so, if someone helps you with moving that means they're a true friend that's a fact <laughs> yeah. a friend will help you because <laughs> <laughs> i've moved a couple Good times friend. in the in the past few years and i i fucking hate moving i'd rather like we, we had we moved around a few times the last time we moved i was like look i don't care what it costs i'm paying for a moving company and i paid for a moving company and i <laughs> and i sat down and watched them way. pack up the boxes and move them to the other house i can't, i wasn't gonna do it again that'll drive good for nuts. you yes i had to do it i didn't good care i did not care sat down and watched man that sounds good <laughs> so a little bit more to the left it's like could you guys <laughs> could you guys bring me a water while you're up when you're taking that box over there <laughs> grab me a soda well you put the refrigerator get a beer from there <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Here's the the big question of the night: When when we're gonna have a, a dear Cezazel reunion? <laughs> just for me. You could do it just for me. Just for you. <laughs> oh man. We could throw That's the question. Back yeah. I think well, we all have like home recording studios, so. Yeah. I, and I think the person that we should do is listen to the songs. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Step number one: listen to the songs and know exactly what was happening. Right? Uh, I mean, I, honestly, I'm I'm down for it. I mean, I've talked, uh, I briefly talked to Jesse about it once before, and 
and with Peter briefly as well. And I mean, I'm I make most of my money on music gigs, so you know, I'm down for for playing. I'm okay with it. Man. Right, do it. Talk about it's been, it. It's been a long <laughs> time, man. It's been a long time. I'll be there. I'll I'll be there. <laughs> For sure. Oh, yeah. The audience of one. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah. Um, yeah. For uh, yeah, the old the old gray mare on the singing just ain't what it used to be. But uh, I might be able to pull it off on the recording. Look, there is there is a song that I didn't. Uh, I just kind of listened to it maybe a few years ago, um, called. The the one maybe or the only, the one, it's off. I the think one, the at the very end of that, you hit this ungodly high note. I don't know how, the hell that came out of your body, where you sing, uh, "I wish that I could be," but it's like, all the way the fuck up there. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. yeah. I always wanted to be one of those guys. Um, <laughs> Uh, that, could the, that could hit those real screechers, and for a while I, I, I was. Um, I'd sort of be like on on like my regular days, it'd be like a B flat B, but like when I'm like back in the day when I would like take a few days off of like drinking and screeching, I could sort of push it up like a little bit to like the high E. But my my voice was always kind of like sort of a uh, it, it was it was not very in control. It was like a a guy who plays tennis that can't aim. Um, yeah. As with Jesse's voice was always his voice was always right on. Like he was like Captain Pitch. You know, he was he was always in tune. You hear the live recordings of me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes a little pitchy. But, yeah, I was, I was proud of that big note. Yeah, yeah I'm, I was gonna say like, is that one bigger than the end of a? Uh... Disappearance? No, disappearance. That's a that's a high note at the end of disappearance. Yeah, that's a high E. I think it's. A, yeah, that that was that was. I gotta go back and listen to that one now. Yeah, you should listen to this disappearance. That's a that's a that's a jam. I love that song. That's one of the OG songs. I think one of my I think my favorite song of the band was always Ashline After Midnight. Yes. That little breakdown. I hated how it. I hated how it turned out in the studio, but I loved. I loved that song whenever we played it live. Because it was a. Uh, it's just, you know, great. Uh, you know, um, um, the graveyard scene was cool because it had that, um, uh, you know, that kind of like that Iron Maiden feel to it, or Judas Priest feel to it, you know. Mm-hmm. But you know, Ashman After Midnight was my favorite, and. I think we stayed away from making songs that you know songs that long though. Yeah, yeah. But that was a really long song though. Yeah, but- <laughs> what was the other one? The under under the under the big tree is that what the name of it was? Yeah, under I mean, the, that, yeah. yeah, that was a that was a great song too, man. How did that? I've work? actually got a video. I've got a video. Uh, it's in someone else's possession. Right? Why he's supposed to be transferring all this stuff digital so I can get it all loaded. But we played one show um, in Montgomery at a place called Head on the Door, and we played. Oh, damn, I remember that. Place. We played. <laughs> we played legitimately like every like every song that we had like ever. I mean, I, there, I think there's 39 songs on there, including the covers. Wow. Um, and I've, so I've got a video of that. It's um, uh, it's it's. It's pretty badass. So, like I said, I'm, I'd like to I'm see that. It's on, it's on, it's on hi-fi eight, a little tape, and there's no adapter, so oh. you've got to use like my camera to get it to transfer it to something else. And this friend of mine said he could do it without realizing there wasn't an adapter. So now he's got like all my tapes because I've got several DA shows recorded. Well, I got actually. a whole bunch. Actually, I got yeah. a very first show that we played at the Georgia Dome. At the, um, I do too. I do too. At the radio station that we played a song there that was oh, at the, at the as long. Station? Yeah, that was at it was just as long as Ashland After Midnight, but it was too prog, and we decided to not play it again because the keyboard player at that time didn't like it because it was too progressive. 
Leaving Sparrows in the Middle of Leaving Sparrows in the Dust. Yes, that was the song. Yes, that was the song. Leaving Sparrows in the Dust. Y'all, y'all yes. really need to post all these videos. As soon as I get them, <laughs> as soon as I get them digital. Well, you could just take your phone and put it at the screen, right? Just film the screen on the camera. One hundred. I mean, that's how that's how I normally record anyway. So, <laughs> not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, I wish I would have uh, uh, gotten gotten a music video put out. That would have been awesome if y'all would have got one of those. Yeah. We, we flirt, we flirted with the idea of, you know, when we got, you know, we, we finally signed that record deal and I, I thought, you know, you know, the gates to the land of milk and honey will open. Here comes the video budget. Here comes the tours. Yeah. Here comes the show booked and I don't got to do it anymore. Here comes the two weeks in the studio. But, uh, it, it didn't happen. We, I flirted with some ideas for like a She Sells Sex by the Seashore video. Mm-hmm. Um, we had moved back to we had all moved to Florida uh, around the time we get signed uh, of course you know all my friends are in love with Satan would be in a, a, would have been a fun video too yeah that song's I very menacing was... <laughs> <laughs> that one yeah. part but <laughs> yes, <it is. laughs> yeah the one part was pretty menacing what, what's it felt this? like you were riding, riding this huge dark wave when it, had, when it kicked in live yeah, I showed it. I showed it to my brother, and he was like, "Holy shit, what is this?" Ah, it was awesome. Uh, what What's the meaning behind that song? Is there a, like a double meaning, or, or you just, just, just you know, just, just love Satan? Which is fine. You know, yeah. people, I think it was just a mock. It's a mocking song. It like mocks the the kids that say, "Oh, I hate, I hate God, I hate God," and then when they're closed doors, they're like, "Oh God, I'm sorry. I said that. I'm so sorry, God. You know, I'm sorry." Um, you know I love you. We're cool. <laughs> oh, my friends, I gotta hate you. To be, to be cool. that, uh, is that? Uh, if I'm hanging with my buddies. I gotta hate you, okay, buddy? <laughs> is that Let's the same that thing? Uh, the same thing with uh, drug train? Is that kind of a a hit at people doing drugs, or you just really want to do drugs? No, I think I, I think we were really trying to. Get... <laughs> that, 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 that was that was written. Literally, 100%. I think that song was written in the drug train. I <laughs> oh, was the drug train yeah. a real place. Y'all got a drug train? Uh, oh yeah, oh god, yeah. Um, choo choo. There were a whole bunch of see back back around that time. There were, you know, we'd be listening to all this music, and like there'd be a bunch of bands that had some song about the drug train, you know, or you know about the the recklessness that comes with being in a band, and. um I think that was just our. T- I think that was just our take on it. Uh, you know, the. I think I think the Satan. You know, all my friends are in love with Satan. Like to me, that was more about like. I thought I kind of thought I was I was sort of a bad dude at the time, like, like not a good person, and. I was like that was kind of me sort of, checking myself. I was like oh, I don't really, necessarily like the person I am or who I. You know, at this point, so mm-hmm. uh, that that's how it was to me. Like, if you listen to the lyrics, that's where it is. But then live, it comes off totally different. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's like big scary experience. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's like, it's I'm actively participating here. in something, something bad. Me and Jesse would always look at each other when it kicked in, and we'd be like, "Oh yeah, yeah. you feel it." And we <laughs> always used to that. that. We always used to do that little dance in the beginning of that song, remember? Oh, the can-can, yeah, man. <laughs> the candy man can, because he mixes it with love. It makes it the world taste good, good. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, talking I'm, about favorite song, I was just going to say, like, I feel like Peter bringing up She Sells Sex uh, by Z Tour, when we were on, uh, on, our, on the big tour, that seemed to be the one that I think all the guys that were along for the tour, you know, the other bands and then the, the road crews, that's the one that seemed to be the, the big hit with them. They really dug that. So having a video with that one would have would have probably gone over uh, really well. Really well. Yeah. yeah. Which is yeah. a really shitty record label. I'm telling you, some of those record yeah. labels are just 
out there to fuck with people and, and mess with them. I don't know how y'all's was, but um, just some, cheap. Yeah, they're like, hey, we set you up on a tour and good luck getting there. It's like, are you gonna are you gonna give us some money to get there? They're like, nah, <laughs> nope. Uh, then you, you know how you get around. If you if you don't sell enough merch to get to the next town, you ain't going. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. You want to you want to shower you want to shower tonight? You got to do Jesse. <laughs> you got to make friends. <laughs> you got to make friends. <laughs> um. Hey girl, these you are look good. Let me let me come home with None. you and my whole band. <laughs> Beyond. Sorry, my Google Home just went off for some reason. <laughs> Y'all hear that? I, I, <laughs> I know it's hard. You just like you talking about like you just talking about horse and teeth rock stars coming home to take yeah, showers. Yeah. She was like, she was like, shit, yeah, bringing home the. I've done. Play Look, I'm breaking a sweat. <laughs> yeah. the, the the fun record label moment that I remember was you know here we are we're on the store, you know on our own dime, you know, but they, they, they bought some merch for us. So there we are, we're in like Rochester and they've flown in to see the show. Are they like encouraging everybody? Yeah. Do they, do they ask for our merch money? Yeah. yeah. How much do you got? What do you got on your homie? Uh, I'm going to need that. The record label asked for your sales. Yeah, but it, Oh yeah, especially because it was, God, a it, was only, it was only the second or third, sh- yeah, second or third show of the tour. No, it was a first show. No, the first show was Buffalo. First show was Buffalo. Oh, that's yeah. true. Buffalo, Allentown, right. Allentown, and then Rochester. So yeah, three days worth of merch. Driving through, like we got fucking stuck in the snow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I remember that. I remember that. That was actually a different tour, but it was still. Um, Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh. Remember, we got stuck in Pittsburgh. Well, we had to drive through Pittsburgh to get down to oh, New Jesus York Christ. or something like that. All right, something so like that. We'll, I, we'll all talk about our favorite moments of the tour. But on our first one, I thought about this earlier. I was like, you know what? What am I definitely going to bring up? So, uh, Peter was the the owner of the van. Thank God. Otherwise, we we would have had to walk to each show with a substantial amount of gear. Um, and so he made it a whole lot easier. But when we get up north, like we're in the middle of this blizzard. I mean... Oh, shit, yes. Like like you've never seen before. I mean, especially from Florida. You wake up to, to dunes that are really cold. But we're driving through the middle of the night to get to... Like I said, I think it was Pittsburgh. It was somewhere. Um... And the heater in the van broke at nighttime. And there's and, there, and there's black ice on the road. Like every 20, 30 feet on the interstate, there's a car that has just made its way into the trees. And we've got all this weight behind us. And Peter's driving. Thank God he did a, a fantastic job. But it was so cold with no heat and the ice coming up off the ground. With our own breath, we created you know, humidity inside the van. And so that all turned to ice. We had to use the ice scraper on the windshield on the inside. inside. On the inside. <laughs> all night long. Yeah, I've got a picture. I've got a picture of one of my films where I'm sitting there, look, I'm like trying to measure, and it, it, it seemed like a quarter inch of ice on the inside of the windows that we weren't scraping. There was ice on the carpet of the van. Like, you couldn't take your shoes off. It was the coldest. Hell is not fire and flames. Hell is is fucking driving through Pittsburgh with no heater. Like, that was that was a painful experience. That's uh that's your second uh t shirt idea. That's your second <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fans from Pittsburgh that would attest to it. I will tell you though, as the sun came up the next day, I've never felt <laughs> I've never been so happy. So happy to see the sun. And it's not like it warmed up immediately or anything i just knew that we had made it through the night but as it was coming up you legitimately saw the mountains and again we're seeing this different landscape for the first time and purple mountains majesty 
right there in front of you. I mean, they're legit purple mountains. And I don't think they look like that in the middle of the day. But when the sun's coming up and it's melting, what little bit of permafrost is still on the ground from the night before, it was really it was something beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful mornings of my life for a number of reasons. <laughs> Worth being one. Well, on, on, I'll stay on, on my end that night. <laughs> on, on my end that night, we had um, driven, we had left Manhattan, and we had to play, we had to play Kentucky the next day. I booked the show. I did this to myself, but I didn't know the blizzard was going to come. So, um, I think uh, we drove through the night to get there. I let the bass player Chris drive for a little bit, but I, I was up all night. I think I maybe slept for an hour, and then, like we get to. Louisville, Kentucky, we're playing with this, playing at like a skate park or something. And Sounds uh, accurate. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. I was, I, was, I was not a pleasant person to be around at that morning, for sure. I was in abject hell. I was like, you know, because everything just turns to uh, endless doom. Yeah. Endless I... doom. Wow. I'm not a big fan of long drives. Uh, I drove back from Disney World. It, from where I live, it's like 10 hours. And I drove that a few months ago. It's not my, it's not my thing, man. I'm not, I'm not a driver. Not long distance. Sure. Just stay, away from, stay away from Texas, dude. You wake up three different mornings in a row and you're still in Texas driving nonstop. <laughs> yeah. Same with Nebraska. Jeez. Like, oh, Nebraska. I remember that. Nebraska was, oh my God, it was the worst. <laughs> Biggest fucking bug I ever saw in my life. <laughs> Just corn? Like, you know, cock roots? Oh, Jesus. No, I, I mean, it, it, I, I can't even explain it. If Godzilla was a cockroach, this is, this is, what, uh, this is what I had to contend with Stay. in Nebraska. So uh, I'm going to avoid Pittsburgh in the winter and Nebraska. Let's talk, let's talk about a Chattanooga hardcore show that we got booked at at the, uh, at the end of that one. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Oh, the neo-Nazi place? The bar fight. <laughs> yeah, so, so here, here's, here's probably like the best Dears and Zazel tour story. It's like the second to the last day. Things are going kind of bad with our keyboard player. Like, we're all thinking about ways of how to throw him out of the, the bus <laughs> without him <laughs> noticing, just drive off and leaving him there. <laughs> like, like how I was, like I, I was really, really rude after that, that, um, that long overnight drive. And I think that, just, that, was, that was upsetting. And, um, so thing, things were already tense, but then like, you know, we played the set in Chattanooga. The sound man's bad. He can't get the feedback to go away. Anyway, we get through it. But then what comes up after us is like some sort of like so you know, neo Nazi hardcore band. Punk, oh. Yeah, neo Nazi skater punk band. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Black flag sounding motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Talking about they they hate black people and hate Latinos <laughs> and all this other <laughs> shit. And I was like. I remember looking at Jesse and Peter going like, yeah, I'm definitely in the wrong fucking place. Dude. I'm going outside. <laughs> so there's a, mosh, there's a mosh pit. It really consists of about four very sincere people and then the other, you know, 100 people that are like trying to avoid them, like around the periphery of the pit. And here we are, um, you know, we're, we don't like these, we don't, we don't like these guys and they keep sort of edging close to us. Anyhow, Eventually, one of them does a flip into the group. I react on, poorly to this. Onto and, the fucking merch table. Onto the merch table, yeah. Yeah, he, he like does this flip stage dive, and all of our shit flies everywhere. I mean, and this this was not bought and paid for by the record label. It was bought and paid for by the little bit of money that we earn each show, and you know all the help that we could get. We all had pride in these things. We are all designed by people that we knew and cared for. And uh, this one fucker tries to fuck it all up. So, uh, as Peter was saying. 
But then I sh I shove him away. He's he's looking at me like what? You know, like uh you know, this is this is what I'm supposed to do. You know, how come you're not accepting what I'm doing? And uh, I didn't I didn't respond well to that. And um reacted pretty good. So then he rushes at me. I think he I think he hit I think he punched me in the face and all his and all his friends descended upon me and the next thing I knew I was getting my hair pulled by some girl across the room. Um Cardo um saw the guy trying to come like cold clock me from the side and I think he and I think he grabbed him. Like I have a distinct memory of of him of Ricardo moving very fast. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh wait, there's something else of the story that we're forgetting. So it was this was a girlfriend and wife night. So all all you know, girlfriends and wives were there. Like and the second I was I was out, I was in the back and I heard the screaming. I come inside and the first thing I tell Jesse is like, dude, grab the girls, take them to the back. And Jesse is like, get them. I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna get a piece some, uh, somewhere in here. <laughs> So I'm running and I see Peter and I see Peter like in the in this group like in the middle of the group and I see this fat dude trying to punch Peter in the back. So I go and I grab the guy and I body slam him on the ground and then somebody somebody else started yeah and then somebody else starts fighting somewhere else and then we're all fighting and I'm throwing you know punches everywhere and it was just a, a full blown riot. It was. We got kicked yeah, out. It was a fucking riot. <laughs> and, we got um, kicked out, and we we, we got charged with being uh, inciting a riot. <laughs> yeah, like, that's what the guy said. The, Get the fuck out of here. The end of the night had us all had us uh, getting kicked out and walking by these dudes, and they're like, you know, we're of course like, you know, you know. Uh, there's, there's, five, there's five of us and our girlfriends, and there's at least <laughs> 20, 25 of these assholes, and they're all holding fucking skateboards, ready to crack our heads open. And I, and and I, I think we all, you know, I think we we were ready, you know, we were ready for that. I was, I was mad, but I think Jesse said he's like, I'm on probation. But like, it's <laughs> you guys, so, so we had to, we had to leave. I would have just, at that point, you know, just take my loss, hop on yeah, out of there. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we left. We got a hotel somewhere in Tennessee. Like, all right, peace out, guys. I'm gonna, uh, uh, I'm gonna let y'all hate minorities and stuff. We're gonna go get a hotel. Y'all enjoy your your skate. Though. That's what I. Do. I believe that there was a. I will. I won't mention too many details, but I believe that there was a a sword in the van that someone was was attempting to retrieve. <laughs> Picking the mow down all these fucking <laughs> no hot looking scared. Uh, what what kind of sword was it? Like a King Arthur style sword, uh, like a samurai. Definitely. It was definitely Excalibur. <laughs> it was it was a first act sword. <laughs> Bought at KB Toys. Oh. <laughs> Mall Ninja sword. Well, I mean, no, it, it, was, it was a real sword. It's at least intimidating, you know. I mean, I've never seen anybody bust up in the middle of a, a bar fight with Excalibur. So. They never. It was just a, wasn't it the keyboard player that came out with a sword, right? Wasn't it him? It was, it was my girlfriend at the time. She had a katana. He, in the <laughs> oh, really? Was it? But it was. It was probably like one of those like things, like he hit it against anything, you know, snap the blade would snap off, something like that. So, all, I, all I remember from that night, particularly, is that when we went outside, the keyboard player ran. He ran away. He didn't actually stay. And I think that was the last. Looking for an escape route. Yes, and I think that was the last drop for the whole thing, and we were like, "You didn't even have our bags, dude. You didn't see us." Like, I thought he was. I thought. He, I remember he had a big fist. I thought he was beating up some guy on the inside. I don't know. This this bull. Like, this might. This was outside. I just remember being outside, and him, like him, come running up, and I'm like, "Where the fuck have you been, dude?" Like, because 
as you said, I have never, I've never seen anyone go inside a bar fight with Excalibur. But have you ever seen someone get hit in the head with the trucks of a skateboard? I have. It sucks. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it exactly. Yeah, and it, there was was, the right, it was. It was the right decision to leave. And everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and so he comes running up, and he's like, "I've got a way out. Fucking, let's take it. Let's go and get <laughs> out of it. here." That's so crazy. Yeah, was, yeah, Meanwhile, was, like, my, my girlfriend is over there instigating more shit. She keeps calling this, the fat guy that Ricardo was beating up. She's like, you're just fat. You got a little dick. <laughs> I heard uh, calling someone uh, overweight and insinuating that they have small genitals always makes the fight just, just calm down. It takes the edge off everything. Everybody immediately... Uh, relaxes, chills out. Yeah, that's what I, I thought so too. <laughs> How wrong it was. Well, kind of like everybody gets into this survival mode, and everybody, you know, like uh, this, this guy kept coming back, and I remember like yelling at this guy. It's like, dude, I just fucking destroy you on the ground, dude. You want me to do this again? Like I was like so fucking like, and then everyone was like, oh, you motherfucker. It was great. That's that was what, a great night. <laughs> that's what you need. You need a video of that fight. That's what, and that's that's what we need. Can we can we get can we get arrested if we find a video? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> hey, look, I'm on probation. <laughs> yeah, no, no well, violated mount pro. We'll uh, blur your face out. <laughs> Put a little blur on it. Oh. The, the events. You know, I have to wear a mask at work, and uh, I'm like, I, you know, I couldn't rob a bank if I fucking wanted to, because you could cover up uh, the majority of my face, and I still have, I'm still way too distinguishable. Yeah. He was a red-headed dude with a red beard. <laughs> They're going to find me. They're going to find me quick. Uh, so we got like five of those guys. You check this one, and it's probably one or the other. <laughs> Wait, was he in Ireland? No. Was it in Scotland? <laughs> no. All right. We know who it is. Was he in the live action role play? Yeah, no. Kind of I was back then. It was sort of, to me, it was sort of like like being part of a pirate crew. Um, okay. You know, it was an everyday pirate, pirate life. <laughs> a lot of rum. What's it uh, The D and D game that we're playing is it's called High Sea Shenanigans. And we just got onto our pirate ship last night. So when you say pirate life, uh, it, it could be more true. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's awesome. So I never stopped living. Do, uh, do any of y'all actually have any Dearest Azazel merch left? I got yeah. some t-shirts, but I got the, just one t-shirt of every tour that we did. So it's like, I still have them all. I had two, I had two, um, I had like I got a this. trailer full of stuff. Um, I got this. Oh, oh nice. nice. There you go. Can you see it? So I have that, except it's a button. Um, you know, like, like so many bands from back in that time, like you can only buy CDs in increments of a thousand, you know, for, for like a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And you know, like so many, like so many others, like eventually you gotta accept that these aren't gonna sell. So, or you, or you just need the space. Like I had to, you know, if, I think I gave away like all the Dears, Days of Sex is a Sin shirts um, from that tour. It was like, I mean, it was like 2010, and mm -hmm. we broke it up for years by that point. It's funny, um, I've got, so I've got at least, I got at least one of them, and I gave, I gave one to my brother-in-law, and if you haven't seen it, it's, it's connect the dots of two people doing it, and, uh, anyway, I gave one to my brother-in-law, because he's, uh, he's never seen us live, uh, he, he was living in Jacksonville at the time, and. Because my wife's brother, he moved in with us and lived with us for a while. And I gave him a shirt. But he went uh, he went to Winn-Dixie one time. And this uh, this younger person was like, 
fucking Deers is Angel. That's the coolest shirt, man. I love that band. And this is years. I mean, this is years since we had last played. So it was, it was, you know, the Lord, the Lord, still, it lives on. Yes, I'm pushing it still. I shared, I shared one of your songs the other day on my page. So it's still, it's still Which certain. You? Sex is a sin. It's a good song. It is. Was is that a uh, look? Here's what I was saying. If if y'all happen to stumble across an old box of shirts or something, I would like to have one or purchase one get one somehow if y'all find it i thought that we're selling through amazon are you i thought i saw some of our merchandise on amazon yeah, I yeah thought, no, I I've, definitely, I've definitely seen some of it for sale i mean yeah. i know you can buy all the cds last time i checked you could at least yeah i didn't i didn't know you can i don't buy even the have i don't even have any of our cds <laughs> I, don't have I have any of them. <laughs> i have the very first one that uh you can it's it's like almost like you did it yourself with a label maker, or maybe someone did it for y'all. But it's got like a paper top. Oh, you're talking is about it, the demo that we did. It's white. It's white. It's just studio. it's just white, and it's got like a paper top on the CD. Uh, and then I yeah. have I have the one that has the Chinese uh, monster lady on the front. Okay, that's the, that's uh, yeah, that's so me. That's the second one. So the first one I've got, and I know I've seen for sale. Uh, that's what we did with Matt Malpass. He re actually recorded Mastodon's first album. Oh, oh no, that was Matt Washburn. Matt Washburn, sorry, yeah. Matt Washburn. <laughs> Malpass did the, did the, the second to last one. The final one. Oh. Yes. Oh. Um, so, is that a ukulele at the beginning of sec, uh, no. Seashell sex on the seashore? Yes. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Okay. And uh, and the little uh, and the bass drum is actually a fist on a door. A door? Yeah. yeah. I, th I I figured I thought it was maybe on the back of the guitar, but the door's cool too. Yeah, I like how that starts. Yeah, that this song was sort of built on uh, Ricardo's sort of octopus uh, techniques. He would like <laughs> he, he would be doing <laughs> the hi hat, left foot, and then. Uh, so he, he was doing a bunch of stuff at once. So it was some good octopus work. We were like, oh, we gotta, gotta rock this. Gotta, <laughs> gotta build something around this. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, there you go. That was the right. Oh, yeah, you nailed it. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Nailed it, bravo! Thanks. Hey, if y'all play another show and you need someone to do the ukulele intro, I got you. <laughs> You're in there. I can't believe it. There's, that, a, there's a video. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think yeah. that's the actual notes. I'm yeah, gonna, no, you nailed it. It's, 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 it sounds right to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go yeah. and I'm gonna go and test it after. He'd be, he'd be minor. I don't know what that thing's tuned down, to. Down that, half that's, step. <laughs> that's just, just tuned it till it was making noise. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like, what's done. But if we're talking about that song, there is a video um, of a couple of guys, and one of them is a, a violin player. He's actually got a bachelor's degree. He's a phenomenal violin player. But they, they played that song, and this guy plays. That guy, he's, he's the, he was the violin player in the band that I'm currently in now. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I was wondering, right I was like, that was, that was so random when I no, found that on no, YouTube. No. I was he like, did that way before I was in the band with them. Yeah, way really? I, 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 no, yo, yeah, they, they lived in Jacksonville. I saw it too, and I'm like, what the, f and then he plays the solo, and I'm like, holy shit. It was, it's so good. Are you saying that they played, she sells sex by the She sells sex like, what what do I type sure. in? Yeah. Say it's on. It's on. Uh, that cover. Just type in um. Yeah, she's just like this cover. cover. And and it's uh, cover. and then let me know what you. It might say. It, it, you'll just see a dude with a violin. Usually, he's got dreadlocks. He's like a black dude. Have you seen this, Peter? Yeah, there's a guy playing. Yeah, here yeah. it is. 
Oh, here's another one. <laughs> uh, she sells sex acts on the seashore. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's just that was the next video down. I don't know. If that's, that's a hatchet one. Ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. Right. Yeah, that's 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 mighty axe. Oh, it's, it's playing through here. Uh, Y'all can't hear it, but uh, everybody Who's else can hear it. Oh, he's singing. It's not YouTube, so. What? He's singing it, too. Oh, yeah. It's, I think it's Josh, Teddy, and Tyrone. That's sick. Yeah, that but was yeah, what. Peter, when you get the chance, you, you need to watch it. One, uh, check it out. One, uh, Slow the cover. One thing about y'all is y'all had a lot of the the harmonies in the instruments were really good. Especially uh, sometimes they play off like the guitars. Like that song had a a guitar harmony part in it, and then sometimes the synth and the guitar would harmonize together. And I thought that was really awesome. That was one thing. Yeah, yeah, we would uh, we put a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. Moving forward, whatnot. Um, cool. Reunion. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. Just do it. Or well, just we, just write a it, new song. Just, 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 just do it. Yeah. <laughs> Come closer. Touch me. Be mine. What would the fourth two-word thing be? Suck me. <laughs> <laughs> what well, I'm yours? Was that the last one? That would I know they were, they were, that would they were all based on, on the little candy hearts. Oh, were they really? <laughs> You're cute. That uh, could be one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're cute. I like. We had a, we had a, we had a whole bunch of songs that we that that we um, had. Like I remember one called "The Big Blue Moon," that never made it to that never made it to the record. That was a great that, song. That, that was that was very disappointing, actually. Yeah. yeah don't ever let your. Don't we had a really record label like. Yeah. Or your producer. Do like, you have any songs? Fucking yeah. yeah. Take you know rest control away from you uh, whenever you're making your albums. Yeah. That was a really shitty record deal. Like they fucked us so bad. It's so bad in so many ways. She said, uh, "Take me out to dinner before you fuck me so hard." Uh, record label. Shit. Uh, yeah, I, some, I think he bought us. They'll take, a, they'll take us out to dinner and make us pay for it. They'll take us out to dinner and then make us pay for it. It'll be like, oh, you guys got the tab, right? I can't uh, believe they asked for your terrible. merch money. I would have been like, fuck you guys. Oh, you yeah. didn't sold anything. Yeah. So that's, what, that's pretty much what I did. I was the one keeping the tally sheets on tour. So I put like, uh, like we sold like, we're not gonna get in trouble for this right now, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the numbers that were on the tally were not the real numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Cooking the books. Yeah, that's how you do it. Cooking the books. <laughs> yeah, I think I think a lot of bands nowadays sort of have a better idea of this. You know, like they stay indie and they just focus on making make money. Like in, in retrospect, you know, that's how I should have, that's what I should have focused on. It's like, you know, don't worry about getting signed, worry about like, Income and increased audience. And yeah. For all the, uh, yeah. For all the, the merch that we had, um, you know, and I, I saw a band do this, and they would just come and they'd grab a stack of merch at the end of the show, and then they would all spread themselves amongst the crowd, and they would approach everyone. Just approach them. They're like, hey, do you want to buy some stuff? And you don't know if you don't ask. If you just wait for them to come up, I mean, you just got done playing like an awesome show. I would be intimidated to come up and talk to me. Like I might be an asshole. I wouldn't know. You know, but you walk up and you're friendly and you're not an asshole. They want to buy your stuff. Yeah. They just want an invitation. 
Yeah, most yeah. of us. I, I think we also made it a point out every, after every show, we spent a lot of time at the merch table talking to people and, you know, so we were, at least the three of us were always, we were always very approachable. You know, we talked to people and hung out with them and, you know, there was never that, you know, well, I'm the musician, you know, and you guys are the audience. That was never, ever, that yeah. was never that ever involved. At least, at least with us three, it was never like that, you know. And um, it, I think, I think, I think to to us it was more like, you know, we owed it to the people that were there and actually were singing our songs or wanted to buy our merchandise. You know, it was like we saw it as our responsibility to, you know, to be very thankful to them. Treat them right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because. Even even our own team of people, you know, our, our record label was supposed to be supporting us and pushing us. You know, they were just digging our hole deeper and deeper. You know, so we were the we were trying to you know just find a way of just stabilizing everything that was going on with them. So and you know we did again. I I think where where we failed maybe as a band is just the fact that we were still very stuck in being purists. And and we could have, you know, but but it, it at that time, you know, if people think back at it now, at that time, what we want is for people to know that not only that, yeah, we play pop music, but we also know how to play our instruments. You know, all the bands that we ever toured with didn't have guitar solos. You know, they had a, like a lot of electronic stuff, a lot of program stuff. And we wanted to stay away from that and let people know, hey, you know, we can do all this on our own. You know, we do this by ourselves. There is no tracks. There is no, there is not somebody behind the drum kit making noises or playing a, another guitar or anything. It was all us, you know. And even when we played with Mindless Self and Dojas, I think the, the biggest thing that people got was the fact that we had guitar solos. We were the only yeah, band that did. We were the only band that had guitar solos. The only band on that whole tour that had guitar solos. Hmm. That one. That one guy from. Uh, I. Is that it? For what band? No. Um. Die so fluid. Die so fluid. That guy plays some bluegrass. He was good. He was a fuse player. Um, but again, they still use backing tracks. Every band on that tour used backing tracks, but us. Which, just segue, because you said something, Ricardo, that made me think of probably like my most favorite moment, especially on tour, was when we drove to Buffalo, New York. I mean, it's the furthest away from home we've ever been. We're in a place that's, I mean, daunting in size compared to any venue we've ever played. I mean, there were, it, it sold out with thousands and thousands of people and there were countless people in the in the you know the front of the of the house that were singing along the dearest Zazel songs and i'm like this is this is fucking crazy i yeah. can't believe like I, you know I, I thought we'd have to go out there and win them over and i was like these people came sold into yep. it you got to see it and see it as you as you said rick and you know pure Pure and simple, and loud. Yeah, that's right. And I think, and I think, I think of people like that. And 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 uh, that tour, uh, particularly for us, was what opened a lot of the doors for us in many ways. And then we kind of like shut them all down at the end of that tour. But you know, um, we played every. I think every single venue we played. Like we, when we played um, the uh, PA show, I don't remember the name of the venue. But we got there, and the line was literally going across the street, around the block, and we were like, what the? Uh, you remember, Island? was it in Allentown, right? Well, it was in Allentown. Yeah, I, and, I can't remember the name of that one. I remember the, the, one, the one in Richmond was called, like, the Croc, the Croc, the Croc Rock, or the Crocodile Tear, or something like that. <laughs> Allentown, Crocodile Rock. Crocodile Rock, holy it shit. Was, yeah, Crocodile Rock. I can't remember the one that we played, but the other one is where the, the, the label showed up. And talking about sound guys, um, 
So we had played two shows before that that were fucking great. And then and our bass player didn't wear shoes both of those shows. She just wore socks. And uh, then the next show, that third show, the label shows up. So we're under the pressure of them being there. We want to put on a good show. The sound was fucking atrocious. I don't know Horrible. if it was the room or the engineer or what, but it was just terrible. I mean, so much so the label comes up after us. He's like, it just sounded like shit. He's like, it's not y'all. It's this place. But still. And I'm like, well, just thanks for the boost, you know, the vote of confidence. Thanks, man. Well, <laughs> the bass player, uh, he wore shoes that night. And I think it was the shittiest night of the tour as far as shows go. And so we declared that he could not wear uh, shoes anymore on stage. This mother, this dude only brought like so many socks with him. <laughs> and we were not privy to, uh, <laughs> I'll say, a laundry list of laundry mats. Like Peter mentioned, you know, if we got a shower, if you want your socks clean, you shower in them. It's the only way you're getting done. <laughs> And uh, so after that, he couldn't wear shoes, and the smell by the end of the tour was horrendous, but all the shows were better, so it was totally worth it. Uh, well, if you got a bad bass player, tell him to take his shoes off. <laughs> That's it. Or if you got a bad sound guy, someone's got to lose their shoes, man. Some, somebody, probably just get rid of the sound guy. Let's get another one. Yeah. Hire in another Yeah. Um... So, so what are what are y'all all doing now? Y'all in y'all's on. I know Peter's doing another band. Yeah, I've got I've got this group called Legion and the Thieves, ironically named after one of the DA songs. Um, but uh, it's like a, it's it was sort of born in black metal and it slowly morphed into this sort of. Metal with pop and chip tune influences. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've listened to it. It's, been, pretty, it's pretty good. It's a lot of uh, you can't hear. Me. I have a drum set I can play right here, but uh, uh, a lot of double bass. Yeah, it's very it's very metal. Um, yeah. Uh, recent uh, over over the last ten years, I I listened to a whole lot of metal. Um, uh, I would say I, I would say after after Jerry's Azel, I went more in the metal realm. Uh, got into, got rediscovered black metal, death metal, like that. So jumped in that direction. Um, Jesse is in a band called Something to Yield, and I, I actually got to see them. Um, yeah. He did. He showed up out of nowhere and scared the shit out of me. <laughs> yep. Like, there's no way that's Peter. What did you call it? Something to. Yeah, it's called Something to Yield. I'm actually in two bands. I'll, I'll Shenanigans. One of the Shenanigans, that's right. Um, which is a cover band, and that that band makes money. Um, and it puts on a hell of a show. Look, I, uh, on a hell of a show. I played in a cover band, and that was the first time I, like, I used to play in bands back in the day and like you would leave and they'd be like here's thirty dollars split between all five of the guys or whatever and you know i'd play a wedding and and make three hundred four hundred dollars myself you know and they'd be like here you go and then it was just like this is where it's at everybody's singing your song i mean it's not as gratifying as playing your own music but um it was pretty it was pretty cool and it's also you got to learn how to play a four hour show which we is, take one break <laughs> we would usually take two breaks but so we play three sets but each set was an hour an hour and a half and you end up playing four hours four and you're hours. you're pretty fucking tired at the end of the night especially if you're drinking <laughs> oh dude i've never I, I mean i can tell you now that you know i've done i've done my fair share of drinking but when i play with these guys I wish sometimes that the amount of Jaeger that gets brought to the stage <laughs> were just dollar bills instead and put in the fruit jar because we'd leave there with so much money. Because, you know, the shots are $8 a piece and people buy five of them at a time. And they come up, you know, 15 deep all night long. It's ridiculous. But 
you know, you know what they say. The drunker you are, the better we sound. <laughs> what <Yeah>. they say. <laughs> but that man, so, so something yield is uh, is an original project. You know, we, we do play, like most original bands, you know, we throw a cover or two into the set. Um, and it's guys that... Um, you know, I've you know I've worked with, and and they uh, like half their band had quit, and they asked me to play a battle of the bands that Peter was actually a judge for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's um, cheating, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he didn't give us he didn't give us the win. Oh, was well, it? Got, they got they got a couple of them, unfortunately. That's messed what up, dude, do? man. No, yeah, no, they were definitely better bands uh, than that <laughs> night. But we uh, we got nominated for the best original band last year by uh, by a, it's called the Beach Cover. But uh, Shenanigans also got voted for best cover band, best nice. dance band, and nice. um, best cover band, best dance band. And because we do like this choreographed stuff that we do. I mean, it's a it's a freaking show. It's impressive. And then one other thing. And we also do, um, this is probably the coolest thing that we do. Um, and I had to get shut down this year because of the fucking coronavirus. But um, uh, the bass player to, for both bands, his name's Tommy Siren. We, all of us kind of inter- intertangle with, with both bands. But um, we put on a benefit every year called Rock for a Cure, where it's a cancer benefit where we usually get, you know, 10 to 15 bands to come and play one venue for one night and there's three three or four there's like four different stages at this place and so we've got you know everything and just just about every local band that you want to see and then usually they'll bring in like a national you know touring headliner and all the money goes to the um the, you know, the national cancer society or whatever it is uh for cancer but it's 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 been a big deal. We've done it for, for twelve years straight, and there's been a lot of great talent there. And that's 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 one of the awards that was won that night. Was a uh, was best event, and that's that's taking into consideration the thirties. Oh, by the way, a guy died on stage there last year, like mid set. Like he was sitting down playing. <laughs> Rocking too know. hard. Uh, I'm guessing so. You know, <laughs> he was up there and he was sitting on a stool, and his head just kind of goes down. And everyone's like, he's taking a moment. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, going, it's going on a little too long. Like, what's what's up? What's up here? So I mean, that's a hell of a show. You know, someone dies on stage. You you know, it's a good it's a good thing. So. It's not it's not funny, but it's. It's pretty funny. It's not funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. That, that, that's my greatest fear and also kind of ambition is if I'm going to die, I kind of want it to be Go on out. stage. Yeah, like a rock star on stage. Yep. But I don't want to, like, shit myself. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I lose my pants, and I don't want to look like Meatloaf when I do it, when Meatloaf went down. <laughs> that was a tragic day. <laughs> oh, my. Never do anything wrong. Um. <laughs> Ricardo, what are you up to these days? Uh, let's see. I, after I left uh, DA, I, uh, played, I, I played for Wayne for a little while, and I did two sessions with Wayne, Wayne Hall. Um, I don't know, man. I started playing with anybody and everybody. A lot of pop. I don't think I actually played rock for a while i was mainly playing with pop artists you know, solo artists and either the drummer i played and recorded and um then a couple of years ago i decided i want to be in a cover band so a buddy of mine said well great you're gonna be the drummer for my band and that was it i was just been playing covers and staying busy i recorded my you know well now in my house, 
but just staying busy, you know, you know, I used to do a lot of gigs outside of, you know, out of state as well, and, and I just play, that's all, I don't care, I don't care if it's reggae, rock, pop, whatever it is, whatever pays the bills, that's what I'm going to play. <laughs> I'm telling you, cover so, bands, you make you know, money playing cover bands, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, this is the first time in probably four years that I've spent as much time as I have here at home. I'm used to, like, you know, being out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sometimes I do gigs during the week as well, so, you know, I try to stay busy. That's what, I, well, that's what my goal was, just to keep myself busy. And I had, a, I had a, for a little bit of time, I had a cover band up in... Um, Pensacola called My Favorite Acts, and um, we did a couple of shows, and I was like, man, covers are not my thing, like, I don't, I don't dig this, and, you know, but Jesse, Jesse helped me move, to move back home, and then move back, so. I was also their sound guy when he was in that band a couple of times. <laughs> That's right, you were, yeah, yep, yep, so, you know. Stay busy. That's all I do. I have a band right now called Society, and it's a, a cover band. We do a lot of private gigs, and we play at a lot of venues as well here and there. Spanish, English, all of it. So that's it. That's cool, man. <laughs> At least y'all are all still playing and stuff. I I just found a Dearest Azazel T-shirt with um. People, Connect the dots. Yes, people engaging in intercourse on the front. Uh, it says <laughs> figure A underneath it. I can't read what else it says. How much is it? It's thir <laughs> it's thirty dollars, and it only the Holy biggest. Man. It only oh, comes in a large. That's Holy big. shit! I can promise you, it's not from my house. <laughs> <laughs> The, the t-shirt I got here is like extra small. <laughs> all, my shirts, all my shirts now need to be extra large. That's what mine is. Uh, Ex extra large. That's what I gotta wear. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I don't want to keep you guys all night. I, I appreciate y'all coming on. It was really awesome talking to you and, uh, you know, getting you back together so you could realize that y'all need to do a, a reunion. Sure. Yeah, 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 we, yeah, we ought to take control of our Spotify or something like that. Put all the old stuff on there and like maybe release like, you know, Amazon movie. and stuff, stuff like that. that. Yeah, like uh, Apple maybe Music. Write, write a couple, write a couple new ones. Trade trade demos back and forth until something sticks. Especially since we can do it at home. Uh, so, uh, I have to I have to say this. Uh, the, the the coolest thing that happened to me after the tour that, that was DA related I was I was working a, a shit job at a call center and I was able to have music playing in, in the like in, like at my desk right and so I always had it on Pandora and mindless self indulgence was never on there you can't listen to that shit at work um, like <laughs> no, no, nothing nothing at all on my playlist would have sparked what happened next. But I'm sitting there, I've been working there for about six months, and I've listened to Pandora, you know, forever. And this is before DistroKid came out, and for $20 you could get on everything. Uh, which I totally endorse and sponsor, by the way. DistroKid is awesome. There, <laughs> there is. Um, but before you could be on DistroKid, uh, you, you, were, you weren't. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm sitting there at work, and this song comes on, and I'm like, Damn it, man! That sounds so familiar, and I could not place it. Like I know this song from somewhere, and I swear to God, I, I can't remember what it was. But I finally looked at it because I, I was like, I dig this. I've got to give it, you know, a thumbs up. I was like, it's fucking dangerous to say so. <laughs> I'm telling you what, man. We popped up on Pandora, and I was like, baby. I mean, we might not have made it to the land of milk and honey. But this still tastes pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty crazy, though. It was very cool. I, I had a mixed, uh, a moment of mixed joy 
I was, it was around the time that the, uh, the Beat Line album came out, and I, I went to I went to my own little mall in uh, Fort Walton, where I grew up, and I look in the Hot Topic, and there there's my CD. You know, the only, the only thing that made it bittersweet was I had an application in my, in my hand, and I'm applying. <laughs> Did you really? Did you really be here? Yeah, that happened. That's, that's the best. Thank you for that. That's awesome. Can I can I work here? That's me right there. That's my CD. That's my CD. I mean, that's I'm, my resume. That's my resume. I mean, I'm in, right. I don't even need to turn this in. So that here it is. Boom. Like I'm legit. Come on now. I'm working here for you to do you a favor. So that's why. That's funny. That's cool. It really is. I had something similar like that happen to me, but it was um. I think I was at Walmart right before I moved and, you know, uh, I was with my kid and some, some girl comes running and I says, oh, you're, you're recording from here is to say so. And I was like, I have no idea who this crazy lady is. <laughs> I was like, I grabbed my son and I was like, let's walk past her. <laughs> I have no idea who this lady is. Don't look is. at that lady, son. Just walk this way. <laughs> that was a fun moment. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, Dearest is Azel Music is on uh, all the major platforms right now, so everybody can go and check that out. Um, and then something to yield is on somewhere. Can people find that? We're on. We're, yeah, we're on. We're on everywhere as well. Everywhere, and then uh, yeah. this and, is and real quick. Cool. Just, just for funsies, um, we did record. So we've we've got some things that are ba- you know basically self-recorded, but there's two tunes out there that were actually recorded by a, a Grammy award-winning engineer. Uh, he's also the guitar player for a, a '80s tribute band called the Molly Ringwalds. Mm-hmm. I've heard of him. Yeah, I know yeah. His name is his name is Jack. Can't remember his last name. Um, but he actually, believe it or not, Peter, because you know this never happens. He recorded us on spec. He only did two songs, but he didn't charge us for them. And it's some of the it's some of the best quality stuff. Like I mean, and and his Grammy is uh, appropriately placed uh, as someone who's trying to you know make fun of the whole thing. Right next to the piss, it's like right on top of the toilet. So every time you're taking a piss, you know, it's that right at his Grammy. You get. He gives two shits about it. You won't hear him mention it at all. But if you know, you know. But uh, Seven Dust recorded there. Uh, my drummer got to play on uh, the kit that Seven Dust used for an album. I can't remember which one it is. Bass player got to play on the same bass that the dude from Better Than Ezra recorded one of their albums. It was a, it was a cool experience. But yeah, you can check out Dear Today or Something to Yield. Check out Dear Today on all the platforms. Something to Yield on all the platforms. Shenanigans, Fort Walton Beach. If you're if you're in town between Pensacola and Panama City, uh, and you want to come out and have a good time, I guarantee, I guarantee it, or your money back. Money back. You heard it. You said it. <laughs> I said it. I'm here. I'll stop by. I I head out to Florida, you know, every year or so. Uh, I'll see if y'all are playing when I head down there, and I'll check you out. Yeah, man. I'm I'm uh, I'm normally so I'm 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 social distancing right now, but I've been social media distancing this whole time. Yeah. So my last uh, I had a LinkedIn page for a minute, but my last my last social media page was MySpace. I've I've given up since then. What's up, Axel? <laughs> What's happening, man? <laughs> Dude, I haven't seen you since you were this big. I know. He's dabbing. <laughs> dab on them yeah <laughs> dab on them. and uh legion and the thieves is also uh on streaming platforms it is or yeah, yeah legion a... and the thieves is yeah it's on it's on all the major platforms the bedlam album re-released while i was on the appeal bond and uh now and we'll have a new one coming out in a couple months okay 
Awesome. That'll be some, that'll be some pop metal glory. That's awesome. Pop, pop black death metal glory. <laughs> pop black death metal glory. That's that's the third shirt. <laughs> <In his shirt. laughs> pop black death metal glory. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, awesome guys. I appreciate you coming on. If uh, y'all ever want to come back on for any reason, um, I'll be surprised. I'm look scared. it up. <laughs> Why don't you look it up? Uh, look it yeah, up. Right? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, um, we appreciate you guys taking an interest in us and uh, reaching out. That's uh, that's pretty cool. I'm glad glad you did. Thank you for doing. Uh, yeah, awesome man. Yeah, thank I really, you very much. Uh, one of my favorite bands. I still listen to it, like at least probably once or twice a week. It, I just have it on shuffle. If it comes up, I jam it. But I, I, I jam it all the time, all of them. So excellent, man. Great band. Um, it was you. awesome, awesome talking to y'all. Really appreciate it. And I'll let y'all get back to uh, planning the deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep saying it till it happens. Uh, so. Well, you, maybe you can make it happen. Oh, I am. That's what I'm saying. Dude. That's, 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 what he's, that's what he's doing. Right now. <laughs> well, you're gonna get like a letter in the mail. It'll be, it'll just be like, do it. It'll just say, do it. On the, do it. <laughs> real, it'll be real small, like that big dude. So, yeah, we're gonna record you on spec. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that yeah, is. Yeah, say that. That's where someone records you for free in advance for a royalty of any money that you might make. Oh. So it's it's, um, it's it's never actually, no one's actually ever made money off a spec deal. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, but this guy, you know, he gets, I don't know how much on the, every iTunes, out, you know, the, there's two songs that are on iTunes, so he gets a percentage of it. But I remember one time uh, he, he did make a comment. He's like, you know, it cost me like 20 bucks to keep y'all on there. I'm, I'm losing money. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention the time loss, but uh, he, if, if there are any bands out there, he's uh, the owner and uh, engineer and producer of Fudge Studios in New Orleans. Hmm. Uh, Jack. I can't remember his last name, but uh, he knows his shit, and he gets it done quick. It's in, it's it's good, and he's got. A, I mean, he's got. A, he's got. A, one one of the. I mean, we've been we've seen some awesome studios. This guy's got a badass one, man. Fudge Studios. Pretty cool. Fudge Studios. Fudge Studios. That's it, man. Go fudge, your, go, go fudge yourself, guys. All you future stars out there. Get get fudged. Get fudged. Get fudged. Maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe we can get enough to we'll, 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 we'll spec us one more time. Yeah, go out and uh, until, mention... Until then, <laughs> we, should, we should totally uh, collab some stuff because uh, I don't know if you have email, but I have an email. And so when I record something, I can actually just email it to you. And then yeah. you can record something, just email it back. And then we, we can play ping pong with music. I did. I did a collaboration with Peter not recently for a song of his. It, oh, did it, yeah, Rick, yeah, Rick's appearing on uh, on Legion and the Thieves on, on, on Black Dogs. Black Dogs. <laughs> yeah, it's not like... It's not like that. <laughs> not that <Yeah>. Black Dog. We should be the Fever Dog from Almost Famous. Fever <laughs> Dog! Scratching at my back door. <laughs> That's uh, that should be on the that should be on the next album. You just doing that? Uh, I got you covered, man. Ten songs. <laughs> uh, I, I can do it. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So, uh, y'all y'all get y'all get to doing that, and then uh, hit me up when that's ready, and I'll check it out. <laughs> Well, you keep doing you because you're doing it right, that's for sure. And, and again, uh, I appreciate being here. I appreciate being able to see everyone. I uh, I miss and love y'all. Yeah, no matter our distance, no matter our time apart. It'll it'll all it'll all when y'all get back together, you'll be seeing more of each other. It'll be good. 
<laughs> I gotta, I gotta learn all the songs though. Ah, <laughs> uh, you got it. Lord of you got it, man. Um, four on the floor, baby. That's it. That's the way to do it. Um, well, I'll uh, I'll let y'all go and get back to everything. Y'all be safe. Um, I'll talk to y'all soon. All right, all right. Man, thank you. Here. Thank you for everything, man. Right. Take care. Thanks, guys. See ya. Peace.